I'm gonna try to put this into perspective. A single cup of high quality geisha coffee costs more than a night at our little cabin here in Boquete. We've only had geisha once in our lives, and that was just a sip out of someone else's cup. And now, here we are on our way to see where it's grown. This is us. Okay, I think maybe we park up here somewhere? Yeah. How about that? Okay. We're here because Ben at Crema Coffee got us connected with this farm, and it's called Alita Estate. Hola, uh, ¿dónde está Wilford? Hola, buenos días. Buenos días. Uh, ¿Dónde está Wilford? There he is. Hi. Buenos días. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, this is what we do. We do coffee. Si, okay. si. Sí, sí. yeah. I'm going to smell this cup. Felipe is going to smell, and you guys behind us smell this one, okay? This is whatever I know. And whatever you feel, you smell like whatever, you just put it in your mind, okay? Okay. And just so you know, this is Wilford. We're just diving right in, so I'll give you the scoop later. <laughs> Okay, this is turning out to be way more than we expected. So here's the scoop. Wilford's family has been running this farm for almost 100 years. It's unique because more than half of the farm is within the Volcan Baru National Park, and it's one of the highest coffee farms in Panama. We were stoked to simply meet a coffee farmer, learn a little bit, and have a chance to taste some ridiculously high-end coffee. These are geisha treated. This is geisha. This is a geisha. But it looks like Wilford is giving us the full tour from tree to cup. We're gonna go visit the, the geisha trees and some of the other trees and go up into the national park and hopefully fly the drone uh, before it rains. That's the plan in the shortest time possible, I can tell you. So, <laughs> typica. Si. Typica. This is the typica, so he was saying that the, the branches come out kind of evenly like this which is how you can decipher it from the geisha. Which go more up, right? Yes, which I think we'll see in a minute. Jason. Si. You're walking through a coffee I know. Geisha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me gusta mucho. Is anyone breathing kind of hard? Poquito. Poquito. The backpack carrier is breathing hard. I haven't seen this much elevation in a long time. Yeah, Alaska, well, yeah. California. Oh. Ooh. That's nice, right? Yeah. All kinds of new things. Yeah. It's nice. It's uh, floral, but sweet. Kind of like a it all starts with these lovely flowers that get pollinated by bees and form berries. Once the berries are ripe, they're hand-picked, which has got to be a tough job. We actually hand-harvest all of this. But can you imagine? And that's how steep it is. These coffee trees are planted in rich volcanic soil at all different elevations. The misty clouds roll in daily, and the nights here are chilly. It's this environment that makes the coffee grown here different from other farms. But that's the beauty of Mother Nature. Each little micro area will reveal different flavors in the final bean. Geisha. 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 Oh. <laughs> different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, it's so different. A little sweeter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to take these home and roast them. <laughs> <laughs> Such a unique flavor though. It's not exactly like honey, and it's kind of like a fruit, but not. There's a lot more to see. Kind of a big deal. I was gonna film her, but she wouldn't allow it. Showing up. This, this is your deal. This is my deal. This is your deal. You're just along for the ride. No, I enjoy it. <laughs> but you enjoy it to like a whole new level. By the way, we are at 5,263 steps. Wow. Wow. 
Just like that, a whole new planet. And the smell. Totally different. The environment, drastically different. This is like 10 steps from when I stopped yeah. recording last. Rainforest. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm not kidding, maybe 20 feet? Yeah, bamboo. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? That looks like a rainforest, people. Oh, it's starting to rain. Yeah. He said it rains every afternoon. Not kidding. It's like clockwork, man. Now this is where things start to get technical because there are three different methods of processing to choose Look, from. Natural process. Natural, which is the whole fruit. This is honey. Honey, where the skin is removed but the pulp stays. Look, this is a wash coffee. And wash, Dry where all the fruit is removed. And then there are three different drying methods. Mechanical, patio, and raised beds. Ruto geisha. Wash. Look at all those geisha beans. All my coffee enthusiasts. Rejoice. No matter which methods are used, the next step is milling. I put the machine will do. This is the cascara, and then this is the bean. This is what is shipped out for them to roast, okay, from the natural process. Green coffee is one step before roasting, okay? What I did with my foot, this machine will do it with friction, then we'll run the coffee through here, we'll separate the broken beans and small beans, like this one, look. Like this one, see the broken beans? Mm -hmm. This machine will get rid of these broken beans mm. and of large ones like this one. Because they won't so, roast right. They, yeah, they won't roast right, exactly. So then this vibrates and throws mm -hmm. air through here. Mm -hmm. So the denser beans stay here and you get the denser beans, which are the good beans here. And the lighter beans, which are not as good quality, will go here. So what we do? what do we do with the first quality beans? We bring it here for final hand selection. Okay. Okay. Vacuum pack. Vacuum pack. Geisha Natural. This coffee sells for $60 a pound grain. Yep. You heard him right. Okay. $60 per pound. And that's just the standard Geisha price. The super special beans that are sent to auction can go for hundreds of dollars per pound. Okay. We'll do a cup and table here and we'll talk. Uh, this is very, very, very formal for us, okay? This is quality coffee that we're gonna ship out. Like to crema, we ship a geisha, a catuai, wash, natural. That smells like blueberries. Wine has 400 components, chemical components. Coffee has between 800 and 1,000 components. That's why coffee has become so famous. We've never cupped before, and apparently it's serious business. Okay, follow me. Wilfred needs to make sure the coffee he's sending to the roasters around the world okay. is top quality. And cupping is how coffee is judged and graded. It's all blind tastings and a complex world of its own. So every single shipment that we ship out of here, we cup it several times, many, many times. So I am making note, okay, of what is meant, and I'm scoring the coffee, see? <sighs> Look at how the fragrance, when it's the ground, aroma, when it's the water, and then you have flavor, aftertaste, acidity, body, balance, uniformity, sweetness, defects, and then overall. All this, you score it, okay? And I go around the table seven times. Seven times. Look, you wanna get air and coffee at the same time, like this. Okay? Because it's not that easy, but you do, you do it like this. A lot of people drink it, okay? Like my son, I don't. You're gonna spit? I'm not spitting. I'm drinking this. Good. Oh, it tastes like blueberries. Kind of freaking out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Justin, that was a good one. <laughs> I feel like the bigger noise you make, the better you are at it. <laughs> The more you're aerating it, right? Yeah, the more air, but that's not, that's okay. You can 
you don't have to, you know, because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you get well. I'm gonna pass out from breathing yeah. in too much air. Are these all the same bean that's roasted differently, or no. are these all different? Some of them are natural, katuai. Some are watch, mm. katuai, and then. I know that there is a geisha there because I can tell. Yeah. I, I don't know what they are because they are the ones who put it on the exactly. table. You're not supposed to know, right? Yeah, no, no, I'm not supposed to know. Yeah, this just... one here is a geisha. This That's one. my other favorite. Yeah. This is a geisha variety. Seven and two. Yeah, it has such a unique flavor. It's different, right? Yeah. Although eight tastes different than anything else. Yeah, too. eight does too. Eight is also a good coffee. <laughs> one of my favorites. Of course, the geisha is for <laughs> My taste buds are overwhelmed. Like, there's a lot going on here with all these different coffees. I don't know how he keeps it straight. I mean, yeah. I guess it's professional, right? But it's, uh, they're all so different. Kind of freaking happy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Coffee Nerd, how you doing there? <laughs> Trying to contain myself. I, I did my freak out. Now I'm back to myself. Look, look at this. this, this <laughs> For now. Is for the body. Now I go backwards. Okay? Now What's your no, favorite you so far? Of course, this one. <laughs> this one is also okay, but it's a different process. People say, say "Oh, I like French roast. I like dark roast." But that's no, really you're that's destroying the coffee. You're destroying the coffee. You will only taste the roast. You know, the, the like the carbons in the coffee. Okay, but so coffee, specialty coffee, has to be roasted light, always, always. Otherwise, you will not appreciate the flavor, okay? You don't put sugar in your coffee. You don't put sugar in your coffee. Unless well, it's really a, good coffee, unless, you don't need no, to. No, unless it's a bad coffee, that you have to put sugar in cream, <laughs> you know, and change the flavor. Yeah. We put a high value on authentic experiences. And as far as coffee goes, this is the pinnacle. Tasting the world's most prized coffee with the farmer himself. This yes. is crazy. I've never had this. Wow. No. It's amazing. Yeah. Now let me call these guys so we can discuss the coffees real quick. Number two. The number one. Okay, what coffee is this? This is a, a Lida Typica Natural. Typica is a variety. Catuai is a variety. Geisha is a variety like Pernod Noir, like uh, Sauvignon Cauvignon, like Syrah. So Typica is a variety, kind of the heirloom variety, the one that my grandparents planted here. And the process it's natural, natural process, which was dry in the shell. This one is a good coffee. We all three really like it, and we are processing for Taiwan some typicas. And this one fits the requirement of our buyers. The buyers buy here. Ninety percent of our buyers, they come here and cop here. Wow. Okay, and they do what we just did. After geeking out for an entire day over coffee, you might think we'd be overwhelmed. But Wilford has connected us with some friends of his, and we can't say no. This is Graciano, and his farm is Los Lajones. We've touched once before. Okay. Yeah. So the smelling is just, oh, you cannot touch it. You know, if you have perfume or something, normally you don't touch the cup. You just take a deep smell uh, and just think whatever you taste will smell like. Okay. And that's it. Wow, they all smell really good. You feel a lot of fruit, maybe some spicy sometimes. Yeah, they almost smell like liquor. Yeah, yeah some of them are really whiny or licorice. Um, the interesting thing about his farm is he only uses the natural and honey processes because it uses zero water. That's a honey process. So we only pulp, right, without any water. This gets like kind of caramelized. Yeah, that's like we call it black honey. The slurp is more intensified in this room. Uh -huh. It's been cool to meet a guy that produces some really good geisha and cares about doing it responsibly. Copy notes, sometimes I have to ask myself for translation. <laughs> <laughs> You have different there. Yeah. We had planned to visit Graciano's farm, but the non-stop rain made the roads impassable with our little rental car. It's so pretty. Your destination is on the left. We have one last special treat, thanks to Wilford. Uh, we are at Hacienda Las Merelda. If you Google Geisha, 
at all. You'll find out all about them. They're the ones that brought this coffee. They didn't bring it specifically to this region, but they're the ones that basically made it famous. They've won a ton of awards. I'm very excited. <laughs> coffee nerd. And our new coffee nerds, are you excited? Yes. Yes. Always excited for coffee in the morning. More coffee. <laughs> All right, she'll be down in a minute. I think that's what she said. <laughs> We're still working on this finishing. Yeah, uh, we can look at the grounds. So this is it. This is where the most expensive coffee in the world comes from. It's kind of wild walking around the empty patio and the machinery with Rachel. She paints these scenes of what goes on during harvest. Very hands-on time. It's very handsome. Panama has been growing coffee for a long time, but it wasn't until 2004 that the geisha craze hit. Under the cup. That was the year La Esmeralda debuted their geisha and set the record for the highest price ever paid for a coffee at auction, which was $21 a pound. Yeah, I told like, this one smells sweeter. Mm. So we have 10 that we're blind testing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Nine geishas and one patois. One of the is, uh, Fast forward to 2017 and their geisha is still breaking records, but this time it's a whopping $601 per pound. It's amazing what people are willing to pay for a unique cup of coffee. How did he even get this coffee? I didn't even know we were going to be cupping that. So this is the second level, uh, the green label, but a natural process. Okay. Wow. Okay. And this is this is the katwai. Okay, so we, we got that right. Yeah. Yes, that was yeah. correct. So we can definitely tell the difference between a cup of wee and a geisha. Geisha, yeah. 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 Our palettes are evolving. <laughs> Number seven was one of my personal favorites from the cupping, and it was pea berries. A pea berry. Uh -huh. But there's a geisha peepers. Kate, a geisha ah. peepers. I also liked number three. Green label, private collection washed. So it's, that's the one we have about 100 boxes down there that I told you. Ah, uh, you want to buy I'll some coffee, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our experiment three. This one had, uh, this is the only one of the experiments that had yeast in it. So it's anaerobic fermentation with yeast. That would be why I like that one. Because <laughs> and... it has beer yeast. <laughs> <laughs> so Nikki's first favorite was number three. We yeah. sell that usually at twenty-five dollars a pound. Okay, so it's not like outrageous. It's not at well. It depends on what. By the time <laughs> yeah. it gets to the roaster and then gets to you, yeah, it's a very solid geisha. Yeah, but it's not a micro lot because it's got a blend. Because it's blended. Yeah. And then the other one that I liked was the fermented with, oh, the, the, with fermented the yeast. One. That one's so the yeast one. Uh huh. That one's so unique. Okay, so that one that's a fifty-dollar pound one, so but it had some counterparts that were seventy-five dollars a pound. So the one yeah. and the four was the one and the four. So this was number three. The one and the four were more expensive. Uh -huh. And then the pea berry, the geisha pea berry. The yeah. geisha pea yeah. berry is also $75 a pound. Yeah, you've got expensive. Nikki? Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> and then, of course, this was her, this was my favorite. The Mario. The Mario. Yeah. So, let me think. That never went to auction. Our regular price for non auction or outside of auction, mm -hmm. natural process geisha is $60 a pound. But if that had gone to auction, it would have been over $100 a pound. We just didn't have enough. Yeah. But it's being used for competition yeah. all over the place. Wow. Okay. So I have the most expensive taste. <laughs> <laughs> so I should drink the rest of this. <laughs> Although it probably tastes totally different now, right? Do you guys have grind it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can take these. Oh, oh did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's leave before she changes her mind. <laughs> Which coffee on the table is your favorite? The number 10 was the favorite, and I had my favorite of the washed was also the pea berries. The pea berries? Yeah. So yours is number 10, and the number, number seven. 7, the one that you like. Yeah. My favorite on this table. It's all this coffee left to drink. <laughs> Are you wanting to slurp every single cup? Yeah. Yes. Just be shaken in the back seat of the car. <laughs> It's wasteful if we leave it. <laughs> so it's time to go. We, we say, let's go, and Justin says... One second. <laughs> He's got to slurp as much coffee as he can before we go. And one more, number five. <laughs> this one? Yeah. He's never going to be the same after this day. Mm, still good cold. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Are you sure? If I have to be. <laughs> To be completely honest, it hasn't all set in yet. If any of us were fully aware of just how special this experience is, 
There's no way we'd be playing it so cool. All right, you guys ready for the next adventure? Yes. yes. I have good news and bad news. So I have good news and bad news. Uh, she's going to get me a list of places you can find this coffee. And actually, Graciano will get a list from him and Wilfred as well uh, of where you can find these coffees. But we have learned that it's all about where they're grown, the type of roast, just the education. We'll, we'll put together some sort of something that makes sense in, our, uh, in the post. So click over to our site and find more. Yes, because it's been information overload. I think this is the end of this video. I think so. Oh man. I know. Okay. So thanks for watching. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, we've got some coffee to drink. Yeah. Bye. Hasta luego. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. One last statement, which was, and it has to be different answers. What was one thing you learned? about coffee from all of this. Justin, altitude. we'll start with you. Definitely altitude. The higher it is, the better it is. Okay. I think it's neat that it just grows like all over the mountains. So I really, really like mountains and different terrains. So it's neat to see how it just grows everywhere in the mountain wow. areas. Peaberry is a fancier bean than I thought. I thought it was just kind of a standard bean, but every time we got it at a coffee shop, it just, mwah, I loved it. and. You know, now I know I really love geisha too, which is a problem. Yes. <laughs> you and you? Hmm. I guess for me, I always knew that growing coffee was like a hands-on process, but even it's even after the bean has been picked, the picking and the taking the cherry part off and the mucilage and even natural process, I guess it's very hands-on. There's a lot of work that goes into making a cup of coffee. And I really have a greater appreciation for that now, so that's me. Bye! It's the longest inning screen ever. Ever!